typically people who are uh, getting the CBR 500R, they have a couple questions before deciding if it's the right bike for them. Uh, they want to know either, usually they're either like, um, they haven't been riding motorcycles all that long or they're thinking of getting it as their first bike and they want to know if the CBR 500R is going to be a, a good fit for them. So in the past I've done a couple uh, reviews and um, talked about my experiences on this bike quite a bit in my past videos. But uh, one of the questions that I had that I haven't really discussed too much in my other videos, which was a concern for me when getting the bike was how long can I keep this bike? Is this a bike that I can continue to have for at least the next couple of years down the road? Or am I going to outgrow it really quick and want another bike? So before I answer that, I'm just going to tell you my experience. So it was kind of like this. When I first got the bike, this was my first real motorcycle. Like I always say, I came from uh, two scooters before, a 50cc and a 150cc. So when I first got on the bike, it was uh, a bit overwhelming. And uh, a lot of that was attributed to the new learning curve associated with getting the bike. I had to learn how to shift, uh, deal with the different... Uh, weight and seating heights, the different mirror angles as well, um, and obviously the whole fact, well, going back to shifting that, it's not automatic. It's not just twist and go. You've got to play with the clutch. So in that sense, the bike was overwhelming, and when I first got it, it felt like it would take a while to get used to it. Uh, fast track two weeks in the future from then, I got used to it pretty quickly. Not so much the power. The power probably like a month later I got used to the power and got used to what it could handle. It took me a while to get used to the bike but that's just coming as um, a newer rider and all that. Uh, for more experienced riders or someone who's getting back in the game I think this is going to be a much easier bike to uh, get used to a lot quicker. Um, especially if you're getting this as like maybe a second bike or you're downgrading from what you had as a larger bike you'll get used to the bike really quickly and in that sense the, the bike might feel a little lacking. But as someone who's never had more than 500 cc's, who's never had a super sport like um, uh, CBR 600 double R's, the 1000 double R's, or uh, a bike I was recently considering getting the uh, FZ07 or even FZ09, uh, this, I still have a lot of fun on the bike and I don't feel like I need it anymore. Anyways, but going back to once I got used to the power on this bike, afterwards, I started feeling like, oh, I wouldn't mind a little more, and I still feel like that. But once I, w when I started feeling like that, I was like, uh, oh man, maybe I'm going to outgrow this bike really quick and I'm going to need more. I'm going to need a bigger bike. That's why I originally started looking at the FZ07 as maybe like a second bike. But when I thought more about it, it did like reviews on, online. I mean, yes, it's a fantastic bike, and going back, if I had the skill set I do right now, uh, there's a good chance that I would consider getting the FZ07 over this. However, since I already do have this bike, and I've had it for a while now, I don't plan on getting uh, another bike. Uh, for the near future, at least. Um, despite the fact that I wouldn't mind extra power with the bike, I wouldn't mind accelerating a little faster, this does all I need it to do. And for most people, it's going to be able to do all you need it to do as well. Uh, like I always say, it's still quicker than most normal cars. It's still a ton of, uh, ton of fun to ride. And it's a great learning experience on the bike. Now, perhaps like I'm thinking maybe five or ten years down the road, I might want to upgrade the bike. I might want to have this just as a commuter, and I might want to get a second bike. Uh, and I think that would mainly have to do with if I plan on riding with a lot of other riders which have bigger bikes, in which case you might feel like this bike is lacking, and you're always trying to keep up with them. Maybe. It, it depends on what they're riding, and of course how they're riding as well, and where you're riding. 
So a lot of factors go into that. However, uh, for my riding style, what I needed to do, I mainly do commuting. Um, a lot of the times on roads like this, in which case this is one of the best bikes for that. It does has great fuel economy. It's got great passing power. And um, it's fun and easy to learn on. And it's not going to get into trouble really easily. So in that case, I really like the bike for that. Obviously, it could have more top end and it could accelerate a little faster, but I don't need it to. And think about it. Uh, you don't really need a bike, technically, that could ever really do more than 90 miles an hour just because there are no roads, really, that you're allowed to do that legally. Uh, but obviously, there's different riding styles and roads and times when you're riding with other people, in which case you might be riding more like that. And this bike is lacks the upper end that a lot of those other bikes do. But if you're just getting this as a commuter, you don't need that super sport. You know that from now that you don't ever need a ride super fast like that or really accelerate that quickly. Uh, those bikes do offer like more adrenaline rush than say compared to this. But this has great styling. It's very economical and that's what I wanted out of a bike. I wanted an all-rounder bike that I could take anywhere I wanted, be comfortable on it, and not feel like I needed more out of it. And in that case, with regards to that, this is the perfect bike for that. And I don't think there's ever going to be a bike that can really offer the uh, entire package that this does. Yes, there are other bikes, like I always say, that uh, are better in certain uh, aspects than this, but altogether, they don't offer the same package. It's a, it's a different riding experience as, as compared to this. So for my riding style and what I need it for, this, this is always for the for as long as I can see going to be the best option for me. And with regards to that, I don't think I would need to upgrade the bike to get a better experience out of that. Now in the future, I might get a second bike, but I don't see myself for right now, and this could obviously change, but I don't see myself ever selling this uh, in the near future. I see myself riding this for as long as I can, uh, making the most out of this bike, and uh, continuing to have a good experience with this bike. Cause like I always say, uh, when I was thinking about this bike, I, I was always thinking, how long can I keep this bike? Is this going to be something I can outgrow really quickly? Which is why I always tell people, don't go with the Ninja 300 or smaller bikes like that. Because while maybe you're indifferent to it, maybe you feel like the styling's a little better. Maybe you're a newer rider and you think you're going to be more comfortable on that. But with regards to those bikes, those are bikes you definitely will, in my opinion, uh, upgrade really soon and feel like you do need more out of it uh, later. Th that's going to be lacking, especially in the top end and things like that. In which case, it's not going to always be the most economical bike for you. Uh, it's not always going to be able to uh, give you the best riding experience. So that's why I always say, if you're, get, if you're thinking about getting a first bike that you want to grow with, uh, learn on, and have for a lot of the near future, ooh, that guy was running away from the police. So yeah guys, hopefully that helps you out, especially if you're considering getting this bike and you're not sure if this is going to be a great bike for you and you're considering uh, getting this or maybe like an even larger bike at first, this is going to be a good start for you. This is going to be a bike that you can keep for a long time and continue to grow with. Perhaps in the future you might want to get a second bike uh, that can do uh, something a little better. Maybe you plan to go to the track later. Maybe you plan to do longer commutes, in which case you might want like a cruiser or something. Uh, maybe you've got a lot of super sport buddies, in which case you might want like a 600 double R bike in the future. But for like I always say, for me, for right now, this is the perfect bike for me and I continue to enjoy this bike and what it offers. Fast SL is what his license plate says. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this uh, video helps you out guys, uh, especially if you're considering getting the bike and you're not sure at this point if it is a good fit for you. Hopefully this video helps you decide if it is. 
I know, like I always say, that was one of the biggest concerns for me, knowing if this is a bike that would match my lifestyle and if I would continue to, uh, to want for a while. Uh, if you found the video helpful, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm a CBR 500R rider. I'm helping a lot of people decide if the CBR 500R is a good bike for them. Additionally, I have a lot of people in my community right now that are CBR 500R riders. They constantly are commenting on the videos, uh, adding their input to see if the uh, CBR 500R is a good or not a good bike and what they like and dislike about it. Uh, share the video if you know someone who's interested in this bike or you just find to help out with the channel, the videos are entertaining and all that. And uh, until next time guys, have a great day. Peace.